Oluwa Tosin Adegbite. Oluwa Tosin Adegbite is a product of God's grace, commissioned to help others through the struggles and adversities she had passed through. Mrs. Tosin Adegbite is a coach and mentor to young women who are struggling with their identity and are feeling unseen in their struggles. She holds their hands until they see in themselves what value God has established in them before time. Mrs. Tosi Adegbite is fondly called the Value Lady by her close friends and her aim is to live up to that clarion call to help others see the value they possess. That they are not ordinary and were created by God with a grand plan. She is the author of Before She Says I Do, a book that lays out the principles for a good marriage and shares foundational blueprints to great decision making when it comes to relationships. Oluwa Tosin is also a prophetic music and worship minister with a sultry voice who loves to share God's heart through songs. She has shared over 10 songs to date and hopes to share so many more during her lifetime. She is the proprietor for I Bethia Ministry, whose mission is to make God known and share life ideas and impact positively. She is also a resource person on the Excellence in Network a group of trailblazing leaders and reformers who are being stretched for impact. Tosi Adegbite is married to her beloved husband of seven years and they have four treasured sons. Please welcome Tosi Adegbite. Judging the nation to see if that, if that spirit of what they're, what's going on in the nation is in alignment with the spirit of God. So, um, you know, because God called Deborah, she arose, she arose and then took the seat of judgment. So she was able to, we know what was going on and see, you know, if there are things that are not right within her atmosphere or within her platform, she knows what to do to make the change. So you like a Deborah rising are an agent of change. So she said that, um, Go and march. It says, behold, the Lord of God of Israel has commanded. She's talking to Barak at this point. Uh, or she's talking to um, Barak. And she says that, behold, the Lord God of Israel has commanded. Go and march to Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men of, of war from the tribe of Natali and Zebulon. I will draw out to Sarah, the commander of the Jabin's army, with his chariot and his infantry to, to meet you at the river Kishon. And I will hand him over to you. Then Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. She said, I will certainly go with you. Nevertheless, the journey that you're about to take will not be to your honor or glory because the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh and Barak summoned the fighting men of the tribes of Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh and 10,000 men were set, went up under the command. Deborah also went up with him. Deborah said to Barak, Arise, for this is the day that the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. As the Lord not gone before you, so Barak went down from Mount Deborah with 10,000 men following him. Deborah, it's time to arise. So the Deborah that we're talking about, she was a, the, the way she go, she was used by God is that she uh, allowed, she saw what was coming and then she was able to reach out to, um, she was able to reach out to, uh, you know, have, have uh, the, the, you know, Barak lead the war, but Barak said, I'm not going to go alone. I want you to go with me. And so we're going to, we're going to dissect who an agent of change is in terms of, you know, Deborah herself. Uh, so who is an agent of change? An agent of change has been changed by God to be a leader who can relate to the pain of the people in her world. She sees situations as they could be, and then she arises the same way that, you know, Deborah arise or arose. She saw the need. She saw the things that are around her. She saw that things were not okay. The way we look around us and say, things are not okay. People are suffering. People are going through things. They are not okay. So because of that, she arose. Amen. So she had experienced pain in the person that squeezed out the unnecessary vices that the world struggles with. So an agent of change is someone that, you know, God has pressed. Is <laughs> someone that has gone through some level of pressing. Amen. 
And um, an agent of change is someone who has gone through some level of adversity. It strikes me that God himself give, gives the most rigorous crash course in adversity to those who he has the greater assignment to. Let's take, for example, the life of Joseph, the life of Esther, the life of David, the life of Daniel. So our adversity is not about us. Our adversity is a training ground. Our adversity is a place where God can use to press. It's like when you're crushing um, olive, you know, the olive, the regular olive. When you're pressing it and crushing it, you're crushing the oil out from it. The pressing is not an easy thing. Adversity is not an easy thing. An agent of change has gone through many adversity. An agent of change has gone through several adversities in life. An agent of change has gone through things that, you know, she did, like Dr. Samuel Kundayo had mentioned, and also uh, uh, Miriam and Nereba had mentioned. For those that feel rejected, the, those that feel <clears throat> humiliated, those who are, they feel like they are at the mercy of life, those who feel like they've, they've been at the mercy of issues. You know, Dr. Samuel says that there was level person A and person B. And person A, there's adversity, there's adversity, but she keeps going, she keeps pressing. But person B, adversity, ah, why am I, why am I being attacked? Why is this? You know, always asking why. I always asking why. And then when God says that, when God tells the person that like, you are the one that I'm, I pressed you to call you, I allowed you to go through those adversities to call you, to press you, to make you, to remake you, to mold you so that you are no longer moved by adversity because successful people are those who have conquered and overcame adversity. Change agents are those who have been pressed by the oils of life. Those who have been subjugated to rejection, humiliation, life happenings, the things that you're not even like, you, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like those who have seen things, those who nothing move anymore, even because even before God can use you, he doesn't want to embarrass you. So he will press you. He will make people make you angry. He'll make people make fight you. He'll make your close ones, you know, deny you. He will make uh, people, you know, uh, reject you. He'll make, he will allow people to, to, to look down on you. He will allow shame to come upon you. You know, like, do you know what I mean? That's the process so that you don't get a big head. So that when you get to where you are going, you know, somebody offends you and like, ah, why is this person offend me? And then you are speaking out of sorts and you are getting angry and you're looking, embarrassing God. <laughs> so as an agent of change, God will take you through adversity. Adversity, they say, is preparation for greatness. God's favor equals preparation for the ultimate role you were created to solve. Example, Mary, when God called, when, when, when the angels appeared to Mary, they said, Mary, blessed art thou among women. <laughs> what, you know, when, when, when the Bible is blessed art thou among women. Oh my goodness. There are several, there are some people, let me just, okay, bear with me. Thanks for your patience. So God said, when, when, when the angels of God appeared to uh, Mary and said, blessed art thou among women, that was when her, her issues began. That was when, when God, when the, when the angel of God says, blessed Adele, Mary among women, that was when our issues began. So they say, so they say that if you are not going to do anything in your life, or if you're not, if you're not facing adversity in your life, because you have not done anything yet, it's not because you are not, you have not even started doing things. You have not started doing things. If you have not yet, if you have not yet uh, faced adversity, if people have not really hated you to a point where they, they wish you were dead then you have not yet, you, have, you are not yet ready. You are not doing anything yet. So if you want to do something, begin to, do, if you want to, to face adversity, just start doing something. Just start beginning to ask God for purpose. Ask God where you want to take you. Adversity is your crash course into your next level. You are an agent of change. So therefore you must, it's a must face adversity. Like I said, Mary, the, the angel says, blessed are thou among women, because she was birthing the savior. But that was when, uh, 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 you know, uh, her, her husband or her spouse person wanted to put her away privily. That was when, um, 
that was when um if you're not mute please please just mute so that we're not uh so that there are no interruptions or um during the session so if you, you like i was saying um you know that was when her spouse began to want to put her away privately that was when king K, you know after i got the, the angel of god spoke to Aaron and said, or spoke to her spouse said don't worry this person that you know she, that she's giving birth to is the savior you have to take her with you she's your wife you know don't put her away things like that and then they instructed him and said okay there's a person that's trying to kill the person in her womb the person is king the king that's presiding over the, the nation right now, the king, uh, uh, the king of Egypt. Uh, I'm sorry, not Egypt, the king Herod in, in the land. So, you know, so you have to go and you have to take her into a place of safety. You have to take her and move her to a place where she's not going to be harmed. So that was when her adversity, she had to leave everything behind and move forward because God favored her. So when God is favoring you and you're not going through adversity, it's because you have not started in your journey or your lesson. God has a training pass. God has a training in adversity for you and for anyone who he wants to take from one place to the next level. Amen. Adversity is preparation for her ministry. So she often, so uh, a woman of change, a woman or a person of an agent of change often find themselves in adversity. She, they do not know how to fit in because she is the spirit of truth. Because she has, she's there and she sees and she understands she knows what what's going on and she tries to speak to it and she faces adversity she tries to quench the dark and she faces adversity she tries to um uh, make things right she wants to set an atmosphere of peace but then she faces adversity because there is a spirit of god in her and the spirit of god is the spirit of truth and where there's truth darkness hates if there's a spirit of truth in you the darkness will hate you and the, the, the light within her is offensive to darkness because she will attract unwarranted levels of slander. She'll attract uh, unwarranted levels of exclusion. She'll attract the uninvited. She will not be invited. She'll feel like, why am I so different? It seems like there's a deliberate set of rules that govern her life, but other people don't have to go through those set of rules. People will get away with other things and other vices. People will sleep with, <laughs> with, with, with millions of men. They won't get pregnant, but she gets caught. People will do, uh, will steal, they won't get caught. But she tries to do something like this, she gets caught. Or he. So an agent of change is someone that God has set apart. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a prince, a king, a princess that cannot toy with the other things that the, you know, look at, look at, look at, um, you know, in England, they have an order of hierarchy, right? They have the priesthood, they have the kings, they have the queens. You cannot see a queen being angry. A nation set aside, exactly. You cannot see a king get angry, you know, in public or a queen. She's always like this. You know, remember Queen Elizabeth that just passed away recently? She's always like this, waving her hand. So God has to take you through your crash course of adversity so you don't lose face when you get to success. God has to take you through your cash course of adversity so you don't lose mind when you, you know, God will take you through even within, even, even within uh, <clears throat> things that are supposed to bring honor, you know, bring you honor. You may find that shame exists. And God wants you to go to a place where you're not even worried about shame anymore. That you're not worried about uh, losing face. That you're not worried about your reputation. God, God says, give it to me. Give me your reputation. The Bible says, if one man, if a man tries to save his life, he will lose it. If he tries to, uh, if, but if, if he loses his life for my sake, he will gain it. Give your reputation to God. Give your life to God. Lay it all at the altar. Be deliberate. Let God govern you. The set of rules that govern you are different from the set of rules that govern other people. Amen. To a place where no worry, you're not worried about shame. Exactly. Exactly. Her identity. Yesterday, we had a, a, we, we had a, a, one of our speakers speak on identity. And she says, your identity will be targeted. From the very beginning of your life, 
you know, the enemy will study your life to see, but Dr. Tamir just said that, you know, Satan knows who you're supposed to be. He knows your, he sees what you're supposed to be. He knows what you're meant to be. So he attacks the core of what you're meant to be. Your identity will be attacked really. And and a, a lot of women are dealing with identity crisis because women are birther of purpose. You are, you're supposed to birth purpose, but if you don't know who you are, how can you establish God's kingdom on earth? It starts with identifying who you are. She suffers depression, mental anguish when she does not know her identity. She has struggles to endure. She is a priesthood in the order of the uncommon and she therefore cannot conform because she is a royal priesthood. She gets away with nothing. I tell you, in my life, I've gotten away with nothing. The reason why, because, you know, I was asking God questions like, God, what? Like, I, I, would tell my, I would tell one lie to my mom like this, and I would be caught. I can't lie to save myself. I can't lie. You know, I'll say one lie like this. I get caught. Yeah, by some other people around me will say many lies. They know how to navigate their lives. They know how to wiggle in, wiggle out, and, and you know, like, God, I can't, I can't, I, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Every small thing like this, you get caught. What's going on? It's because you have to understand who you are as a royal, a priesthood after the order of Christ. There's something God is doing with you. There's something God wants to do with you. And you have the spirit of truth within you to possess the land. So when you are called according to the process, according to the purpose of God, you turn uh, God turns this as, you know, you're wailing into dancing. It turns your sadness and gives you strength. Years that you've wasted, that you think you've wasted, you think you've wasted your life. This is kind of small, so I'm, I'm sure you can't see it. You know, so you, you, you may waste your, you think you've wasted years, but God will restore if you ask him to. He will turn your wailing into joy at the precise, exp, you know, uh, at the precipice of your experience, of the height level of your, your sadness, he will give you his life. He will give you life. When you felt you didn't stand a chance, God saw in you what you don't see in yourself and he would turn it around. Amen. When you go through harsh realities, God will tap you on the shoulder and whisper to you and say, open your eyes. Let me show you what I want to show you. Dr. Samuel just talked about vision. He will show you the vision where he's taking you. When you don't even know when you've given up on yourself as an agent of change, if you are called according to his purpose, you have to know your God. You have to know your God. You have to allow God to tap you on the shoulder and say, let me show you who I'm taking. Let me show you who you are. You have yet to begin. Hmm. Okay, moving on. So there are certain things that you will not understand until you face adversity. According to uh, Job chapter 36, verse 15 and 16, it says that God delivers the afflicted by their affliction and opens their ears to adversity. He will allure you out of distress into a broad place where there are no cramping. And what you what is set on your table was full of fatness. Ha! Have you ever seen that Bible passage? When I saw that, I almost jumped up. I almost jumped up and said, oh my God. Ha! <laughs> he delivers the afflicted by their affliction. You know, that song that I sang when we started this conference today. Little is much in the hands of God. Your little is all you need. Step out on faith into your space with your little jar of oil. And also within that song, I said something like, uh, what you give is what saves you. Like we are, we are saved by what we give. You are saved by what you give. God showed me in a dream one day, and I'll share with you. God showed me in a dream. It showed me that I was in a dark place, very dark, like, you know, deep, dark place. And that in front of me was uh, like a car or like, you know, one of those big stadium lights, you know, those big stadium lights that you, you turn on and you turn on and then it lights the whole place. So in front of me was that light type. It was like a, a head flashlight or a headlight of a car. So uh, within the dream, when the light is on, when I turn on that one, when, when I turn on that light, I saw in front of me, wild animals surrounding me, trying to come at me, but because of the lights, they couldn't come near. Because the light was on, they could not come near. 
But whenever I turn on the light, it's like they 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 know how to come up, you know, quickly come and get you. They know how to come and you know, come and, and jump on you. If you do not shine your light, depression, the animal spirits of depression, of 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 things, the, like you you will feel that something is come. The darkness will overtake, try to overtake you. You have to shine your light. That was what the dream was telling. Me. God was telling me, if you don't shine your light, you this girl, you'll be conquered. If you do not shine your light, you'll be overcame by darkness. If you do not shine your light, you will be like people that are talking about you. They will, they will, Bible said, what does the Bible say about that? It says that if a salt is unsalted, what is it used for? Then to be trampled on their feet. Until you shine your light. Until you shine as an agent of change in your workplace, in your, in your environment, in your, wherever you are, until you shine your light. Adversity will be stronger. Although God takes you to the journey of adversity, but you still, you, even in spite of that, if God says, post about me every day on, on, you know, on social media, do it. If God says that, see, you know, make sure you practice your songs every night, do it. If God says, uh, write in your journal, I want you to write a book, do it. If you dedicate that one hour each day to do what you're meant to do, even beyond that, even if you start adding more time, gradually, gradually growing it. Adversity. May be happening, no, but it will not overtake you. Like I said in the dream, there were uh, there was adversity all around me. The lions. I saw I saw leopards. I saw animals. I saw bears. I saw they were just staring at me from the from from afar. And those can be in form of people that are just trying to break you down. They were just staring at me, but they couldn't come near me because I had the light on. Whenever I turned the, the I turned off the light or I turned it down, they they got closer. When I turned it the, at the brightest, they they step back. Because the light protects you. So let me refer to the story of how God built adversity in, in upper management in Joseph. See, Joseph was very comfortable at his, uh, at his uh, uh, father's house. Very comfortable. The father favored him. So he ate whatever he liked. He dressed with the multiple colors. His brothers were working. He was at home being pampered. So he couldn't go through the upper management training. See, God was trying to get him to understand how to manage things. But if he was in his father's house, his father would pump, you know, be careful about people that pamper you, you know, out of your purpose. Be careful. They love you. They want the best for you, but they will pamper your purpose out of you. So God had to take him from the palace, you know, or, or, or from, from, from the comfort zone and put him in as a slave in a land that he doesn't know. God took him to Egypt in a land that he didn't know anybody. So he managed Potiphar's house. The Bible says that Potiphar trusted him with everything except for his wife. Upper management training. He was sold into slavery to become a, you know, trained in how to manage things because he's going to manage a whole uh, food uh, resource when the farming hits. After that, hmm. You know, God says, no, you know, the next phase is that I just, I want this boy to get to the palace. But if he's in this Potiphar's house, he won't get to the palace. You know, Potiphar is close to the palace, but mm, yeah, we need to do something. So what? The next thing that happened, the wife of Potiphar started, you know, having eyes and winking at, uh, Joseph, at, at Joseph. She, he, she winks at Joseph. Joseph says, no. <laughs> she, then she, she, she complicated him and she, you know, she navigated away and, and tried to sleep with him. And he said, no. And so she died on him. And so because of that, God took him from Potiphar's house to the, 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 the palace, I mean, to the prison that the king's people are locked in that dungeon where they throw people that have offended the king and, you know, the king's men. And that's when he started connecting. In your adversity, you will find connection if you stay close to God. In your adversity, God will connect you with people that will take you further in your journey. So in your adversity, don't start fighting Potiphar's wife for lying at you. Don't start blaming the people that are trying to shame you. Don't start looking and say, oh, these people, why? I've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. God, why me? Why me? Why? Me? I've cried those. Have you not cried those cries? Why me? Why me? But the thing is that you cannot blame those who are trying to harm you because God uses everything, even adversity for your good. Amen. 
God uses adversity for your good. And then because of that connection, he found himself in the palace. And that upper man, even when he was in prison, guess what? The, the prison guards, they made him the, you know, overseer of the prison people, like, you know, in, in, so the upper management training, he kept being trained by God while he was even in prison. And then from there, God took him to the palace, just like that, just like that, just like that, God took him to the palace. Amen. So you are an agent for change. You saw the dream. God didn't show you the process because if you see the vision and you know the process, you may back up. God didn't show Joseph the, he showed the, the vision. He saw himself as the stars and the firmaments were bowing to him. He saw himself as the one that was standing and everybody was bowing. That's what he saw, but he didn't see the process because if God were to show you your journey and the process, you may back up. You may say, no, this is not for me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I like the soft, cushy life. I like this because, you know, who doesn't like the soft life? I like the soft life. Why would I go put myself through adversity? Why would I go my, you know, put myself through that process? But I don't want to, I don't want, that's why God shows us little by little. That's why God takes you one step at a time. If you hold on to him, he will move you to the very last end. He will move you to the, your next level. Because I've seen how God in my own very life, I've seen how God uses the adversity that I have endured. Oh, I've, I've said all this, I've, you know, the, the adversity and I've seen how God has used them to traject me, you know, especially when uh, there, there will be times where I'll, I'll feel as if, oh, you know, all these loss, uh, you know, things are hopeless for me. Uh, you know, I just, I just kept holding on to God. I just kept knowing that, you know, if I hold on to God, if I hold on to God, if I hold on to God, God will take me to where he wants to, in his time, in his time, in his time. I had my, uh, my, my firstborn at the, at the age of 18, you know, like out of wedlock. And because of that, I married to, I married the person that I was pregnant with. Hallelujah. If you're, if you're not muted, please mute yourself. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. One second. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, uh, please mute yourself. I'm trying to mute you, but I don't have to allow you. Mr. Mr. Oibo, Mr. Oibo, thank you so much for joining. Do you mind muting yourself? Okay. There we go. Oh God! All right, we'll we'll figure we'll figure something out until 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 then. So, like I was saying before, you know, before that, what we are trying to uh, what what you know, I went through that season. I went through that that stage where God was. Uh, there we go. God bless you. Please mute. All right, so you know, I, I went to that stage where I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what God wanted to do. I just I was just going through the motion, and um, you know, I was pregnant from out of out of wedlock. I just got a great scholarship into a great university, and I lost it all. I lost it all, and I felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I felt like, what is this? But like our previous speaker had said, God uses everything that we are going through to help us in the journey of purpose. And he allowed me to have the audacity to tell my story because it was a story from shame to, you know, to God's manifestation. I'm married to an amazing man. Now he's, he's online, I believe, uh, Nathaniel. My amazing husband, Nathaniel. God bless you, hubby. Thank you for joining and, and, and being a, such a great support. He's watching the children now. So, I, you know, I can do all this. <laughs> we have four boys. So it's, you know, we, we, we are blessed. So, you know, God took me from, from that, my, my first marriage, from the shame of my past, from the, from the, from the humiliation, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pastor's daughter. Imagine, imagine. But because of my, my affection, because of my, you know, my, my, my affection, I thought I was in love. I moved from that from 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 being graced in a full scholarship to a great and prestigious university to losing it all 
being pregnant at the age of 18, having my son and, and, and not knowing what to do. Then I had to move, you know, from one place to another. And God graced me to go back to school and finish. God graced me to meet the right people. God gave me support for my family. God didn't allow the, the, the ends of the enemy to prosper against me. But some, some people don't even have the support. Some people don't even have the backup. But God is your support. No matter where you are in life, go just allow God to, to take you from one, one place. Like the same way he took Joseph, God will take you from where you were to where you are going to be by the grace of God. If you trust him, he will show you the way. No matter how hard it is right now, no matter what it looks like, your adversity is the change agent to help others to thrive in their world. So God will use your pain and make it an experience that will transform your life and the lives of others. And your story will be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. So let, these are the, the, the um, this is what I call the creed of the woman change agent. She marries intentionally. She doesn't marry anyhow, because a woman change agent has to know that marriage is, a, is for a purpose. She has to know that marriage is for an ordination, that she needs to be married to someone who is in support of her purpose and destiny, that she, she needs to marry someone that's not going to keep her quiet when God says speak, when, you know, she needs to be married to someone who can be a priest of the household, someone who can help nurture the girl, the, you know, the nature of God in, in the household along with her. She needs to be able to marry purposefully, intentionally, a woman change agent. Because sometimes if you, you know, Satan will, Satan, if Satan cannot get you in any place else, he'll wait for you at marriage. He'll wait for you. He'll say, I'll just wait till you, let's see where this one can do. Let's, let me bring that one over there. Let me put him in her life. Let's see how far she goes. So a change agent marries purposefully. She teaches her children to love God and she affects the children in her neighborhood equally. A change agent, because in our world that we live in today, for change to happen, and I truly believe that the pains that we have in Nigeria are the pains of the household. It all began from the home. It's because of the mindset. It's because of the things that we do not know. It's because of the things that we allow. It's because we want to be strong women. So we smack our children anyhow. We beat the destiny out of them. We beat them every time they speak. You talk too much. Every time they do something, you act too mean. Or any, you, you know, when they, when they don't greet very well, why are you not greeting that auntie? Although they, the, they, uh, the children can see that that auntie is bad for you and them. You beat the, the destiny out of your children. So they've complied to a certain strict set of rules and they cannot fulfill because you have, they, are, they are so guided by a set of rules. They are so guided instead of God, allowing God to let you see. We have to see who God wants our children to be. We can't beat them and beat them into compliance. You're the only, they obey, they obey God. They obey their parents. But you, you have to also be intentional about who your children. So you raise your children to love God, love people keep his commandment and affect the neighborhood's children. Because if your children are good to go, but the children in the neighborhood are armed robbers, one day those same children can come in and rob and kill and steal and destroy. So your children are not safe until every children is safe. Amen. So you have to marry intentionally. You don't have time for quarrel because you've been changed. Like I said, the pressing, you don't have time for that. Somebody is bringing wahala. Bye. Somebody is bringing issues. See you. Somebody is bringing, okay, bye-bye. Adios. You have to let go. Let go of quarrels. If you have to stay away, stay away. Keep your peace. Maintain peace. Bible says, follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no man shall settle. Maintain your peace. Maintain order. Number, two, number three, I guess, two. A change agent is not moved by adversity. It teaches how to navigate success. She's not moved by adversity. She plans her moves and is not moved by circumstances. I'm going to wrap up because of our time. She consults God concerning everything, um, even the mundane things, such as what to wear and how to wear her hair. I, I put that there, the wear your hair. You have to learn, you know, there was a time God told me, he says that, so why are you covering my beauty? Why are you covering what? Because I used to wear wigs and, and you know, also said, God, God will say, why, were you, why are you covering my beauty? 
So I had to take off the way. I said, God, what do you want to do with my hair? What do you want to do with my hair? I don't know what to do. It's always, it's always, it's always doing its own thing. And as I say, I said, okay, God, show me. Then he showed me. Amen. So we consult God concerning everything. She's a visionary. She sees, I'll just read through this and then we'll end. She sees a better world for her generation and the ones to come. She will make it happen by equipping those in the sphere of influence in her home, in her uh, environment. She moves with tenacity. She will be brave. She takes very good care of herself and will not indulge in transactions that shorten her life. She doesn't fight. She will engage in conversations that enlighten and build. She will eat food that are good for her and nutrients, rich food. She will exercise, keep up her health. She will pray for those that are hurting and those that are hating her or hating, you know, other. she will pray for people that are hurting. She will see the good in others and call attention to it. She surrounds herself with people that love and support her. She will be loyal to the things of God. She will have boundaries that are healthy and godly. She will not show partiality in judgment. She will consult the Holy Spirit at every turn. She will get knowledge and pray for wisdom. She will lead from a place of love. She will outdo others in showing honor. I have to stop at that one. Sometimes for especially us women, we, we tend to sometimes, you know, try to outdo each other in showing dishonor. And that it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. As women of the light, we shine bright together. We shine brighter together. I'll do one another in showing honor according to the word of God. It's not the culture. This is not, we cancel, we're canceling culture on this. Because, you know, they say, if you want to be good, if you want to look good, you have to make sure that you are the one that's the best. No, I'll do each other. The Bible says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. We have to outdo each other in showing honor. She will engage in profitable enterprise. She'll make money. Ask God, God, how can I profit in this situation? For me, I'm a seed collector. I collect seeds. I like to collect seeds. I can plant things for you. For my, my husband will tell you, I like plants. I like to plant things. Eventually, I plan to plant things and sell them because seeds are abundant. You know, use what you have. If you don't have anything, use the jar of oil in your hand, whatever you enjoy doing. Use it, make profit, be profitable. She chooses and give love as a gift. She chooses to give love as a gift. Our God will teach her hands to prosper and profit. And then finally, in conclusion, Deborah, you need to rise because you are the change that the world needs. Rise because your pain has strengthened you. Rise because you know that God is backing you up to fix that need uh, to be fixed in your world. Rise because if you do not, many people will perish. A lot of people are attached to your destiny. There are destinies attached to your rising and they are waiting to be liberated. The journey may be not easy, but it's very worth it, every single moment of it. And you cannot fail if you step out and constantly be equipped by the spirit leading slowly, but surely God will not uh, grow you in one day because to develop capacity takes time. If you grow too fast, the winds of life will break your stem. Have you ever seen when you plant? Cause you know, I'm like, like I said, I like to plant. So when you plant things, um, any, any kind of plant that grows too quickly, it's easily breakable by the wind. But those plants that break that that grow gradually, like you know the palm tree, uh, uh, the roku, the the mango tree, it takes time for them to grow. It takes years for them to uh, produce fruits. But the wind cannot break them. So I want you to function. I want us to function like the the palm tree that is unbreakable by the winds. It grows slowly, but it lasts years and many generations to come. Those trees that grow slowly. They grow and they last forever. But those things that grow in three months, they're for food right away, right? So it takes time. And that's the conclusion. I pray that God will give us the grace to allow the process. I pray that God will give us the grace to allow him to process us, you know, as, as much as he can, that, you know, we will stay under that mantle of processing and the pressing so that God will get the wine, the real thing that he's trying to get out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So that, that concludes our session today. Let's just go ahead and say a word in prayer. I pray, I hope that you have, you know, you have gleaned. Amen and amen, 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 amen. God bless you. Uh, someone will support her vision and purpose. Yes. I didn't realize my mic had been maximum. Okay. 
Uh, glory to God. Okay. Any questions? Let me go ahead and ask that. Any questions before we just start, we start saying our words in prayer? Any questions right now? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us and waiting to the very end of this uh, conference today. The Ja of Word 2022 is officially going to close in a few moments. Let us pray. And uh, before we pray, let me go ahead and unmute you, Sister uh, KD. Sister KD, are you still there? We'll do this together. We said we did this together. We said this together. We'll do this together. My sister is here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, Sister KD. Wow, wow, wow. Glory to God. Glory to oh God. Goodness. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh I'm Welcome here. to you, Ma. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. That was just a beautiful roundup. That's just wonderful. Please, I want you to appreciate uh, my beloved sister, Tosa Dikite, because she got the vision to do this and she took the needed action. So I want to just thank God for your life. For your life because you took you know you know sometimes we overthink things you know that this had to be to be done this had to be done things were not perfect but you know that you needed to just take the step and see now see what wonderful thing god has used this for i mean so i mean everybody what please put in the chat have you received oil your jar has come you need to fill the oil now we are overflowing it's got for us to step out there to arise the thing arise arise be courageous arise you have enough come as you are glory to god oh adversity is a crash course i love that i love that it's like god pressing what you said so many points there are too many things you need to go back everybody needs to go back and you know get all these messages inside you need to let it be inside our subconscious so it can birth a new reality for us so it's just something that you need to bask yourself in so it's beautiful thank you so much for blessing us thank you for inviting us thank you for inviting me especially to come and i may be part of this i'm just like you know it's just it's just wonderful it's wonderful Amen. God, Amen. okay students but uh, and and I'm just so happy. And so many times I got teary doing the people speaking. I got teary because you know when you when deep calls onto deep, God has been speaking some things within us, and then confirmation, confirmation, confirmation. So I got teary, not just out of sadness, but of joy that expectation is a new season that people are arising, and the Father wants us to arrive. We want we need to arise and take our place. The earth is waiting. As the darkness is getting darker, we need to arise and shine the mm. light. Right. Everybody, light just type in, I will arise and shine. Type in the chat. I will, I will arise. arise and shine. I will arise and shine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm blessed. God, love you so much. God love bless you, you mom. Thank you. Sis. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. God bless you. Thanks for everyone that joined. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Olubinton is, Ola is here. Uh, Esther oh, cool. is here. Uh, Esther Lukoya, Mrs. Favor, Oju, Oju, Ojo Omoni, Omoni, uh, Flo, Mrs. Sister Flo Claudine, thank you. My sister Funand is here. Uh, oh, Sister Gabriel Toyo C is here. My sister uh, Kemi Uguakai is, is here. I think she's the iPhone. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, says Amara, I see it's Amara. Miss Anita is here as well. Did I not mention anybody? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Okay, let's do a, a quick giveaway. We only have a few more minutes. But before we do that, can you please pray for us, Sister KD? Can you please usher us out of uh, our session with prayer? Because I know God has blessed us. Please. In Jesus' name. Amen. We come before you now, Father, we thank you because you are here. Holy Spirit, you have been here with us. This was, this was your idea mm -hmm. and you allowed us to yield to you. And we say thank you mm -hmm. because it is you that worketh in us both to will and do your good pleasure. Thank you for every speaker that have spoken under your unction. We say thank you. Lord, we say that this, all that we have received today make fall on good ground and will be a good fruit that will abide that will remain in the mighty name of jesus mm. we ask the holy spirit to remind us to bring to remembrance all that has been said and to 
empower us to take the needed action because knowledge without action is powerless. So we ask that you help us to empower us to take the needed action to meditate on the word that the word become flesh in our lives and that will back the realities that you desire according to what you have preordained and you have written about us in your book in the mighty name of jesus thank mm -hmm. you father for this gathering as we will close that lord we ask that every person represented here today oh lord that you will take that person to the higher place of glory in the mighty name of jesus mm -hmm. let them encounter you beyond this meeting session let them encounter you that they may know that and show them secrets oh lord that they will know you experientially not that because they have heard from somebody else but they have encountered you and that experience can never be forgotten give them that revelation of who you are so that they can see themselves in you in the mighty name of jesus we cover ourselves with the blood of jesus we cover our family with the blood of jesus we speak peace we speak joy we speak life we speak to every dry bone to resurrect in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Every dream that had, you have put in us, every dream that has been forgotten, we ask that we revived by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, oh, in you. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Breathe life upon us again. Amen. Breathe life upon us again. In Jesus' mighty name, testimonies will abound. Amen. Because today, we will birth things that we had forgotten you have revived us again thank you for reviving us again our light will so shine so shine that men will see us and give you the glory in jesus name we have amen prayed. amen amen and amen amen thank you dear sis thank you god bless you thank you for um just you know helping me throughout this process as well this is our conference god's own conference and this is holy ground and he's he's really showed up and showed out ha ah, yes god yes the mighty one the great i am oh the, Elohim, the one that yes. beautifies lives the one that turns beauty for ashes and helps us to arise the god of in zion the lion of the tribe of judah the ancient one the one who loves us genuinely completely the one who has no reservation of love the god almighty the great one is his name ah god we worship you god we bless your name ah god but seriba it's just our like, you have to start saying the Oriki of god you have to start saying the Oriki of god wherever you are just start saying the Oriki of god just that you know if Oriki is like the praise you are saying his praise Begin to say his praise, begin to shout his name. Glory, Father. We glorify you, we worship you, we honor you. We bless you, God. We worship you, we honor you. Thank you, all, oh, God, because you are. In the last song, to you, Lord. Lord. To you. Hey, God, you are our God. You are our God. Hallelujah. I love you. Do you now see that you're a Deborah? Do you now see that you have a sword? You have, your hands are stretched out with a sword. So you now see that you you are the you are the righteousness of God Himself. Hallelujah. Ah, Hallelujah. hope we caught the vision. Dado Boshandi, yes. Eru jeje omo rukon omo rukon eru jeje. That's it. The ancient one, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Eternal King, ancient of days. Along with Lagbara and La. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, ancient of days. Ijinle. Ninu Ijinle. That means the deepest of the deep. Or if, I don't even know how to announce that. Eternal rock of ages. Allah Allah That means the one that can say and it will be. Who can stand against God? Who can say against God? Man. I don't want to use the word gangster, but you know, like, you know, we are we are like. Huh. Huh. we're like huh. <laughs> when you know you're god you'll do exploit <laughs> he will do and he will say man i don't know how to say that one uh mighty man of war okay i'll just oh i can go on and on and on and on and on. we can say it yes 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 <laughs> Oh God, our joy is filled. He's a God of joy. He's a God of love. He's a God of he's God. Mm. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, ma. Sister Kim, you grab her. Yes, ma. <laughs> yes, ma. Oh, God is so good. Okay, so this is the end of it. Uh, we have a few things to announce. Sis, do you want to do the honor? You go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we're, we do have... Um, two books that we are going to present to everyone that has volunteered. Thank you so much for, for being a volunteer. Those who have volunteered just to share the word, God bless you. Thank you. May you always forever have help. May you always see the goodness of God in the land in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being such an amazing uh, back, you know, back up in this season. So everyone that has uh, been as a, a volunteer, you will receive uh, our free books. Sister uh, Kemi Daniels, Dr. Sister KD has a book titled R-E-S-T. Uh, which, which is Relationship Eagle Strength Test. So I will send you a download for that for free. Um, for any woman that is yet to be married or those that are in marriage and they're trying to get, you know, to, to understand some key foundations that maybe they have missed or that they need to have. So if you're not married and you want to know the key foundations of marriage and how to know for sure how to, you know, Eagle Strength Test your marriage, per, uh, your marriage future, get this book, uh, read it, I'll send it to you. And then I also have a book titled uh, "Before She Says I Do" by Oluwatosi Adegbite myself, and I will send those two to you. It's free; both of them will be free. Make sure you read it. And also, we are we are okay with you sharing it because the purpose that we have is not to make profit. No, is to make sure that God's idea is well known concerning marriage. That God's idea is well known concerning uh, concerning what He wants to do with you. Uh, that's our goal. That's our purpose. Is that you know we want you to know and to be well equipped for your future. So those two books will be sent to you, amen. And then, um, in, and, and th there'll be the digital copies, by the way. So, but if you want to bless someone with it, they are, they are available uh, online to make a purchase, but to you, you can, you will get digital copies. If you're signed up for this event, um, if I don't have your email, make sure you go, it's the, the registration is still open, go ahead and sign up so that I can have your email and I can send, we can send it to you. Um, the videos search for these sessions will be, will be shared amongst us, by the way, by God's grace. I know the, the, the memory or the, the, uh, of the videos are pretty big, so we may not be able to share the full thing. We'll maybe, maybe have to section it out and share uh, different speakers one at a time. So it'll be sent to everybody. So now we have come to a place where we have a sponsor. We have someone who has, you know, sponsored uh, uh, money um, or just gifting a way of money. So the way you can, the, we have two people that can um, get or, or win uh, these money prizes. And the way to do so would be to um, send me an email, send me an email concerning why you need it send or if you want to to says what do you think should we just you know if if you're if you're comfortable sharing it in the chat you can or should we do like email sending so that we can you know pick what do you think yes i think email sending might be better email okay um but because you have everybody's email so but they, they should send it um today today send it today what yes today okay i think so that we since they're here they're here now so we then they need to act fast. So some of the things that we need to test, like when you think to do something, act fast. Yeah. The opportunity comes, but you need to be present to be there to get it. So act fast. So, so send it today. Once yeah, you drop it. Today. Yes. Exactly. And I'll, I'll put my email address on the on the chat. Send me a re send it to me a reason why this uh, will be beneficial to you, especially in this season. And then when we when we have a, a, a you know two winners, uh, it's 30, 30, 000 naira, and it will wherever you are, we'll convert it to a different amount for two winners uh, of of you know of of once you just send the reason in behind it. By the grace of God, we preach. We thank God uh, for our sponsor. We pray that God will bless them tremendously in the name of Jesus. All right, so. And then one other thing I would like to add, I want to add something also that now if you if you have you have the need for it and you send and you do not get to be chosen, 